Our GE is up 20% since the news on October 1st that the company was appointing a new CEO. Today, the stock getting its third upgrade since that day. We've made it our call of the day. Let's welcome in the analyst who uh, made that call today. Uh, it's good to have you with us. Julian, Mitchell, are you there? Yes, I am. Nice to see you. Um, all right. Here's what I don't understand. Um, you, you upgrade the stock to an overweight from neutral, but you keep the price target. What's up with that? Yeah, so the issue here is that, remember, the catalyst for the change in CO last week was really uh, a big shortfall in earnings in the power business. So if you think about the base earnings and cash flow of GE, those near-term numbers are actually coming down. Um, so what we've done in terms of the price target setting is that's pushed out one year to 2020. And then obviously we've rerun the numbers based on the, uh, the earnings shortfall in the near term. So what you're getting is really um, an improvement in earnings in the back half of this decade, so 19 and 20, but a lower starting point in 2018. So you have the impact of a higher valuation on the out-year number offsetting a uh, near-term earnings miss this year. You're, you're not at all uh, sort of you know, put off by a 20% increase in the share price since Mr. Culp was named the new CEO. I mean, that's a big gain uh, for simply naming a new CEO. It's a big game, but I think there's a couple of other things to bear in mind. I think one is that I've followed a number of very large uh, industrial turnarounds in the past two decades. Um, you had businesses like ABB or Alstom in Europe uh, 15 years ago. You had Tyco in the US uh, in the previous up cycle as well. These turnarounds always have violent moves. Um, as Stephanie was pointing out, the stock has lagged horrifically really over the past two decades with a particularly steep drop in the last 18 months or so. So I think that what you're seeing in the share price has been a little bit of a relief rally mm -hmm. because of the change in CEO. Sure. No one though yet is pricing in any improvement in the power business. We also think investors are really overstating the risks uh, in the current share price coming from G Capital. Hmm. So you think power is fixable? Yes, I think the issue here is that you have a headcount of over 80,000 people, but negative EBIT right now, negative free cash flow. Larry Culp, the new CEO, is a turnaround specialist. So we think you could see maybe up to a third of that headcount coming out. That could add about $2 billion to the run rate earnings of the power business. And also then you start to see free cash flow improve dramatically. Yeah. On our numbers, when you think about the impact power's having on the stock, it's extremely negative. You know, for context, we think aviation and healthcare, those two businesses are about 40% of GE revenues. We think they're worth the entire enterprise value of the company. So in other words, investors are basically saying at this price, power, renewables, uh, transportation, Baker Hughes, GE, all of that collectively is worth zero. You, you and we think, think that's too harsh. You, you think um, the dividend is, is any more at risk? Absolutely. So our dividend assumption is we're assuming the dividend goes to 10 cents on an annual basis. When we talk to investors, though, since that news last Monday came out, we don't think, in, we, we, no one we've spoken to is expecting the dividend to remain intact. Some people even think it could go to zero, but that's not our base case.